Okay. Good afternoon. It's uh, Friday, July 10th, where this month is speeding past us. Um, and we are still very, very much in the, uh, the thick of this COVID crisis. And um, we'll get to that. Um, but relate, related to that and to the, the economic crisis that, that so many households are facing and that our country is facing, um, we really wanted to bring uh, some more support um, information on this call today. So I'm excited to be joined by Justin Marino from United Neighborhood Centers or UNC as uh, locally we call it. Um, Justin is the Continuum of Care Director. And we asked him to speak uh, to us when just late yesterday when we saw that Governor Wolf had uh, extended the evictions moratorium. We thought Justin could be somebody uh, that could help us walk through not just evictions, but other services um, that are, are here in our community to help you um, if you or someone that you know might be needing some assistance um, on the housing side or, or any other type of assistance. So Justin, if you could uh, kind of walk through what, first let's talk about evictions, what the governor's um, new order, what that extension means, and then, you know, we have great folks on this call that um, are, are good about going out into their circles and making sure other people know uh, what's available to them and how to get those resources. Sure, absolutely. Thanks again for having me, Mayor. Um, appreciate it. Happy to be here. So uh, as you just talked about briefly, uh, Governor Wolf signed into order yesterday a new executive order that protects homeowners and renters from eviction uh, or foreclosure until August 31st, 2020. If they have not already received assistance from a new program uh, administered by the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency, or otherwise known as PHFA, or they are not already receiving rent relief through one of the several federal foreclosure moratorium programs or judicial orders. So lenders and property owners that receive funds through the PHFA program, um, they agree not to pursue foreclosure or eviction as long as the conditions of the participation in the program are met. So uh, the state extending their moratorium on evictions aligns with the federal moratorium extension, which is, was already extended to October 31st for uh, FHA and any other federally backed housing that's already been uh, extended. So we're all glad that the governor uh, followed suit with the, with the federal government and our state is now um, pushed back evictions to, like I said, August 31st to those who are, have not been able to get any type of rent or mortgage relief so far. So, and almost, it's just, just want to clarify though, in almost all circumstances, renters and homeowners, you know, they're still required to continue making monthly payments if they can. Um, but if they're struggling, they should contact their landlord or mortgage servicer immediately, uh, just to see if they're willing to participate in this new program that's offered through the state. Um, so the governor's executive order does not apply to proceedings that regarding property damage or illegal activity. It's just for those that are having uh, the inability to pay due to loss in income. Yeah, I think that's an important point. Um, and thank you for bringing that up because I know, um, you know, not you can't please everyone at the same time, but it, it's important to note that if there is some, if a tenant is doing something that's that's unsanitary, unhealthy, um, something that something that's related to you know the, the the social environmental things, not the financial. That's a different that's a different type of um, eviction, right? We're talking we're talking about not being able to pay and inability to pay related exactly. to, oh, no, right. Okay. Yeah. I think, I think sometimes that, that piece of it gets lost um, in the, in the, in all the information that's out there in, in the world. Um, and to your knowledge, have a lot of people taken advantage of this extension? Have, has it been pretty easy for people to get those extensions? So um, with, with the evictions being suspended, uh, I think it's just going to give a lot of people more time to get into this this new program that PHFA is offering. So, um, Governor Wolf had chose PHFA uh, to administer this written mortgage relief assistance, and it just opened up on July sixth. So, in doing this extension, it's going to give people a lot more time to apply for assistance, um, to to reach out to their landlords to get them to agree to it as well. Because I think not only does this program and this extension benefit, obviously, you know, lessees and consumers and, and mortgage holders, but it's going to benefit landlords too, because they're going to be able to get some of that, um, you know, back rent that may have been owed to them or rent that they might may not be getting in the future instead of having to take someone and evict them. And, you know, it's kind of a lose-lose situation. We always want to avoid that. So 
um, with this new program that's being offered through PHFA and administered through Lackawanna County, um, someone could receive up to six months of rent, uh, $750 a month. So it's $4,500 maximum between March 1st of 2020, if it started then, and all the way up until December of this year. So any six month period could be covered. And I think um, it's just gonna be a great program that's gonna allow people to kind of get back on their feet. Uh, and, and it's just starting, like I said, on July 6th. So we're kind of gauging how, how people are, how difficult it is for people to do so. But we, we certainly wanna encourage anybody who's having difficulty to reach out to any of the local agencies that could assist them in applying to. So whether it be Lackawanna County, um, UNC, you know, Catholic Social Services, Catherine McCall, any of the local providers um, could help you fill out those applications too. Uh, and they could be done either electronically or through the mail. They could be mailed to the Lackawanna County office. So Lackawanna County actually has a dedicated email. Um, they did re just release a, a press release recently too. So they, they want to make it as easy as possible for people to, to fill out these applications to verify their income, you know, that they did lose income due to COVID and get these, you know, get these funds and get them back on their feet. That's great. And that's the rent mortgage relief assistance. Yep. Um, exactly. I think we had some of these links up, but if you can make sure that we have all of them, if, um, my team has them, we can repost them and make sure that we're making that easy for people to, to find on our uh, website as well. Sure. Yeah. I'll send it out in a, in a nice little paragraph where we have all the info and all the links. Cause we want to make sure the word gets out and that people get, people get on there and get, you know, get the applications in cause August 31st is going to be here pretty soon as well before we know it. I know it's everything is um, the summer is it's been a weird summer, but it's all, it's already going way too fast. Uh, sure. What other, other relief programs or assistance programs are out there that you'd want to mention and make sure that, that folks are aware of? So if anybody is experiencing, you know, hardships due to COVID, we encourage you to, to reach out, you know, to your local social service providers, whether it be United Neighborhood Centers, Catholic Social Services, Catherine McCulley, because we do have our existing programs. We have housing counseling, we have budgeting classes, we have our food pantries that are all still active and, and people are utilizing them, but they're you know, some people don't know they may be first time users of, of the system, social service system. So we just want to continue to, to let people know that we do have food for those that are in need. Um, there's housing assistance that's already out there. Um, there's also some emergency solutions grants that are coming down the pipeline from the federal government that are going to be administered through the city as well that are going to be a part of a future package to to help prevent homelessness and, and house those who are already homeless too. So there's a number of programs that are already out there. Um, just we encourage people to, to reach out to their local social service provider, anyone that they're comfortable with. Uh, like I said, if it's someone that they've already worked with in the past or, or any new provider too, that we'd be happy to help and, or refer you to someone else who, who may be able to help you. That's wonderful. Yeah, if there's, there are so many resources out there, but I know one of the, the issues that, that you have in social services is that there are so, there's so much, but the education piece, getting that information out to the people who really need it by, you know, I can sit here and, and talk about all these things, but I have the internet, I have a cell phone with the internet on it. I have all these resources that you know, someone who's, who's struggling might not actually have. So I know that UNC and other um, providers that we have in the city do a great job of reaching out to folks, um, but it really helps to have our, like everyone in the community, you know, that word of mouth that, hey, did you hear about this? And that, that's been something that's been really big, um, especially in this time of need for everyone. I know we've seen it We've seen it with the food relief and food aid, people telling each other, um, you know, really through the grapevine of what's available. But these programs that um, sometimes they, you know, they can be kind of seem clunky. And when people hear paperwork, they get scared <laughs> and don't want to do it. But they're really, they're, you know, they can get help from, from folks like you, Justin, at United Neighborhood Centers. You guys can help them uh, navigate those processes. And that's really great. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. We want to make it as least burdensome as possible, too. So, um, you know, we don't want to add any extra paperwork or, and, and, and if honestly, if there's services that we don't provide and we know that other providers have, we're going to make the right referrals too. So, so don't be afraid to ask, even if it's something, you know, some providers may not be able to, to meet those needs. I mean, they have a knowledge of who can, so. Right. Exactly. Well, that's something I always appreciate about, uh, about the, all of the providers in Scranton is people aren't territorial about it. It's just about getting the, getting the people the right help through the right service. So we appreciate that about all of you. Um, what's the best way to get in touch with you, Justin, if people have questions, 
you and uh, United Neighborhood Centers. So if you have questions, uh, you could reach me via email at jmarino at uncnepa.org. Um, if you want to get in touch with United Neighborhood Centers, their website's super, super easy too. It's www.uncnepa.org. Um, there we have a, a direct listing of all of our programs. Um, their website is pretty great. It goes through the different programs and how to get in touch with each department too. So you, so you know kind of what's being offered. And, and also um, there's other ways that we can connect you with other providers on our website too. So that's the best, best way that I could say to get the word out. And you, you have other, you have multilingual services, right? You have Spanish and wait, ways, ways for people that don't speak English as a first language to get help. Yeah, absolutely. We've been lucky enough to have several staff um, in almost every department, I want to say, that um, are bilingual. Um, they're able, they're Spanish speaking, and that they provide us with such a great resource in our community too, to, to kind of, to help us translate for some of those like myself that don't, don't speak Spanish. It's, it's a big help to have those staff members. Um, and it's really great. Uh, we appreciate you all so much there. I'm um, excited that there's more help out there. Um, maybe it'll get sent past August 1st, but it's, you know, right now as we've got people have about seven weeks to get that help if they need it. So um, everybody out there go to UNC and EPA uh, for assistance email. I'll, I'll just offer him up email Justin if you have questions. Um, sure, I'm sure he's yeah. happy. To Justin, I really appreciate you being on today. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks for thank all you for me. Thanks for all the great work that you and your staff are doing for our city as well. We're trying. <laughs> Take care. Very good. So we have, um, let's see, let me just make sure I get back to my thing. Yeah, so there's still a lot of great resources out there for everyone in the community. Uh, let me go pop down while we're on services to just see if there's any updates on the food drives. Um, okay. Yep, so next Wednesday, July 15th, 2.30 to 5.30, um, Friends of the Poor Emergency drive through That's at Parker Hill Church in Dixon City. So nice big parking lot up there. Everybody can distance, um, in their, even in their cars. Parker Hill Church, Dixon City, next Wednesday, July 15th at 2.30. Um, that's a great, great, um, great program that Friends of the Poor continues to run. And all the information about the other food drives and resources are always on our uh, website. So we have a we have the business relief piece that we want to reiterate. So ScrantonWorks.org, the uh, loan program is open. You can get a business loan if your business is under three million dollars revenue. Business loans are available from three thousand to twenty thousand. We do still have money there, so please do apply if that's something that you think that would help your business sustain uh, through this difficult time. Also, we're doing a second round of the grants, so this is really really important. Monday morning. July 13th, the grant windows opens again. So we, we, we didn't expend all of the funds yet. So the grant window opens again, Monday, July 13th, 10 a.m., $2,500 um, for qualifying small businesses. You must, your business must be in Scranton, must operate in Scranton under a million dollars of revenue. Um, so there's still, there's still $2,500 grants out there. We're very excited about that. So please, uh, if you know somebody who wasn't able to access that, um, in the first round, let them know if you're a business owner yourself, uh, please apply again, Monday, July 13th, 10 a.m. Second round of the grants. So we don't have a, a lot of funds left, but there are some. So please, please do that. And once you're qualified, it is um, first come first serve. So, oops, and I just lost my notes. Great. Um, <laughs> okay. So uh, on the, the COVID front, so we talked about this last week. Uh, Thankfully, uh, cases and deaths continue to stabilize here in Lackawanna County, uh, which is great news. But I think we've all seen uh, that the rest of the country, things are really, um, really spiking. And you have places like Phoenix, places like Houston um, that are starting to look like New York uh, a few months back. So that is really concerning. We're seeing a lot of, um, you know, I think a lot more cases just out, out there in the country, maybe not exactly here, but I think it's a matter of time before we potentially would see more here and we continue to stay, stay vigilant and to really make sure that people are still doing their part. So we don't have any 
big updates from the city perspective right now. You know, we're still in green phase, uh, still successfully. People, thank you for coming um, just into our small treasury office, um, just that one part of City Hall that's really helpful to us. Uh, we're not holding public meetings here at the at City Hall. We're continuing to do those remotely um, throughout this month and August. So it, we are feeling we're feeling good here. Um, we're in touch with the educators and the schools. They have uh, maybe the tallest order right now in trying in terms of trying to figure out what to do. It's a it's a really it's really kind of an impossible uh, task that those those schools are dealing with. Uh, we're trying at the city to be as helpful as we can, and we convene a group every couple of weeks all the educators and our medical experts to uh, to bounce ideas off of one another and, and get updates. But um, that's, I know that everybody, all the educators are working really hard to find the best solutions. I know that they're um, not, all, the solutions aren't gonna be great. I know prom got canceled and that was heartbreaking. Um, it's just, it's, it's, these are just really hard times. And so I'm sorry that, that this is happening for all of us, um, but it's, it's tough. Um, on the mask front. So we are rolling out, uh, well, it's something that we're following, but we're formally rolling out uh, the mask procedure and how we as a city will deal with violations. Uh, we will get that out uh, sometime today, but essentially if we receive a complaint from a business where say employees aren't wearing masks or the uh, business is not, business or organization is not enforcing masks, we receive a complaint, we will send a health inspector or an officer from SPD if they see a violation, they uh, will note that on that first visit, they come back a second time and there are still violations, uh, that business, uh, that organization will be cited. And that citation is $300, per, $300 per infraction per day. So uh, it's uh, expensive if, uh, if you're at a business or organization and are allowing people not to be wearing masks. Um, it's meant to help meant to help us all feel more safe and more comfortable. So that will be, and that, that is what we have been doing, but we hadn't released a, a formal procedure publicly. A lot of, we've gotten a lot of questions about that. So uh, we'll get that document out. And if you want to see it, you know, uh, we can either send it, we, we'll be responding to emails about it and we can, um, we can put it up on the website. So that piece is, um, is there now. Last weekend, uh, Scranton uh, Police Department responded to over 200 calls related to fireworks, which uh, I'm grateful to SPD for working on that so hard. I know it was a stressful weekend for everyone. The uh, City Council last week, um, they took under consideration a resolution for a joint resolution uh, that together to ask our state legislature and our governor to repeal um, Act 43 uh, which allowed this mayhem and the fireworks mayhem in our city in the first place. So um, city council and I are, are going to be pushing for that, but we need the community to help too. So Mayor Brown of Wilkes-Barre uh, has a great form letter that uh, he's asking Scranton residents to also fill out. We'll get that out to the community as well. It's easy for you to, to you've got the form letter right there. You can print it off or I think even submit it electronically uh, so that we can really be putting pressure on Harrisburg to repeal this. So, uh, there's you know, there's some little things that, that we can do uh, in terms of being the city. We can we can try to enforce, but enforcement's very, very difficult as I think everyone can understand why. Um, we have to actually see someone light a firework in order to cite them. And right now the citation is only $100. We are putting an ordinance up to council next week where uh, that or that city, by it would be a city violation, it would be $300. So if we can get that up, great, uh, it's something, but it's the end of the day, you know, really uh, having these fireworks be legal in the first place is tough. So we'll also have that form letter out. Um, thanks to Mayor Brown and Wilkes-Barre for uh, really getting after this one. And hopefully it's something uh, that we can we can make some improvements and hopefully the legislature will listen to listen to residents and understand what a difficult uh, thing this is. I know it's tied to revenue, like everything. Um, I, I know it's a nice tax uh, for the state to be able to charge, but at this point, it's at the expense of the, the safety and welfare of you know residents from our older adults to our veterans, to our kids, to our, our puppies. So that's uh, important and we'll, um, I'm grateful also for city council and president Bill Gahan for we're working together on this. Um, I don't think I have any bigger announcements today. Oh, we've got a cool, we do have a cool um, parks passport. So we'll be rolling that out. It's, uh, it looks like a real, actually I have one. Yeah. 
So the city is, see how it looks like a passport? Um, great job on my team's part by putting this together. So uh, it's a passport. It has pictures of every single park in the city. So that's some pictures and information. And then it's got a place for, for a sticker here. Uh, and for parents, there's stickers or they're not stickers that we don't have a lot of money as you guys know they're not actual stickers there you can cut them out though and and paste them on and the idea is to you know fill out the passport as you go around this summer to enjoy the parks so uh, we have these at city hall on um, they're out there inside city hall if you come in the front door during business hours outside hours uh they're in the dix court alleyway there we also have them at weston field uh school district uh said that they would help us distribute some too so parks passport um, a contactless way to enjoy our parks this summer. So something fun, um, something fun for all of us. What else is happening? Uh, let's see. We have a new mascot here at City Hall. This is, uh, this is my friend that I've had with me for about six years now, I think I bought him. Um, it's a wooden deer head, it's not a real one. So it's, um, I don't want to offend any, any folks out there that, that don't agree with uh, hunting. Um, he's also wearing a mask to make sure that he's um, following the rules himself. So that's, we're trying to, trying to have a little bit of fun here um, in what is a pretty, a pretty rough time. Okay. Ooh, lots of questions today. Okay. So Trudy is asking, can we look into getting hometown heroes banners? Yes. So Councilman McAndrew proposed this at city council last week, Trudy, and he and I are working on that, uh, working on that effort. Um, and we will, um, yeah, we'll work on that. Uh, on, there is a, the memorial, there's, you know, the, the veterans memorial outside at the Scranton high school. Uh, there'll be a ceremony on, uh, July 25th. Um, that monument's coming before then though, which is really exciting. Um, so there's some, some great, uh, great things to honor, uh, those who have served coming up in Scranton just in the next couple of weeks, but Trudy, yeah, we are definitely, uh, working on that. And thanks to Councilman McAndrew for, um, suggesting that at, uh, formally. Okay. So Tammy for fireworks, Tammy, um, the police non-emergency line is the best way to, 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 um, lodge your complaint about fireworks, three, four, eight, four, one, three, four. Again, non-emergency line for police. Uh, this is best for fireworks, three, four, eight, four, one, three, four. Like I said, last weekend, SPD responded to over 200 calls in the city. Um, we will respond as best we can. Enforcement's very difficult. Um, uh, and the more, the more exact the location, the better. Um, it's hard. It's hard for us to respond to a, you know a broad call. There are fireworks in my neighborhood. We can we can go there, but again, it, it, the enforcement's tough, and that's why we're we're having this this lobbying effort. And we do need your help, so we'll get that form letter out. Uh, and Tammy, you and others, um, please please uh, help the effort. Send those letters to your um, to the, our our delegation here locally, and, and also into Harrisburg. Okay, so Sam asks, is wearing masks when you leave home the law? So now as of last week, the order from the state is mandatory masking when you leave home. The intent is to, you know, obviously to de decrease transmission between people in public spaces. So, you know, this is really, again, about respect, respect, respect for each other, knowing that my mask protects you, your mask protects me. It's a thing of mutual respect. Um, it is an order. It, it is. Um, we at the city are most concerned about enforcement at organizations and businesses that might be allowing um, allowing customers to not wear masks or employees not to wear masks. That's where that mask procedure comes in. Um, but it really it is a government order, and uh, we really do ask people to please um, please be respectful and please please wear a mask when you leave your home. So yeah, so the, the follow-on question is: Will SPD enforce mask wearing? So we'll enforce it at businesses and organizations. Um, and in events if needed. Um, we're not interested in walking the beat around downtown and citing people for not wearing masks. That's it's not the, the type of um, activity that we wanna be doing. That's not our plans. Uh, we really are asking, really asking for this to be a team and community effort here at, at, the, at, the, at the ground level where we just, we just do our part, you know, just please do your part. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's a public health crisis. It's, we're, we're in a pandemic. This is no joke. So we really, really need to wear those masks. And as we've seen, we all know that we don't know a lot. We still don't know a lot. 
about COVID-19, but the data keeps showing more and more that it's airborne and it's droplets, hence the masks being the, the, the most important thing. And then of course, sanitizing, washing your hands and keeping distance. What is so sh uh, Shmuley asks, what is the reason to wear your mask when alone outside? Okay. So if you're doing a solitary activity, there's no need to wear a mask. Um, like if you're in your backyard planting flowers, you, you don't need to, to wear a mask. Um, but if you're you know, going out to take the garbage out, um, if you're going to be alone, you're, you're all right. It'd be great to take a mask with you. I know I've run into this a couple of times myself where I run out to take the garbage out and I forgot. And then I see a neighbor and I don't have my mask. And I, you know, say, I'm sorry, I can't talk because I don't have my mask on. So, you know, just get in the habit. Like we, my husband and I now keep our masks. Um, we have a box of masks at our door. So we always take one out when we're, we're going out so that we, in case we see a neighbor, um, we're always able to, to have that mask. And then we can have that nice distance conversation with our neighbors who we, who we miss talking to very much. Okay. Rob asks, are you aware restaurants are blocking sidewalks with outside seating and cause people with wheelchairs to go into the streets? No, Rob, I'm not aware of this. And you are right. This should not be happening. We have man, we have absolutely told everyone that they need to allow, I believe it's not four feet. I believe it's six feet for pedestrians to pass. So Rob, if you see this, um, if others see this, please call 348-4193. That's our inspections department. Again, 348-4193. Um, and we can respond. So all, all of our, our restaurants who have gotten these, these either, either already had a permit for outside or temporarily have one, they are supposed to leave space for you or for whomever um, in your life uh, is in a wheelchair. So please call 348-4193 or you can uh, email Scranton311 at scrantonpa.gov. Bill asks the, the, the recycling question, uh, are we recycling items yet? So the Lackawanna County Recycling Center the Lackawanna Recycling Center is um, still not accepting items. We are working on, um, they've uh, put forward just this week, they put forward a proposal and we're reviewing that proposal um, in addition to alternatives. And um, I'm anxious to get that back up and running as well. Uh, it's been a, a, a very um, frustrating time uh, for this, the, having the recycling change because of COVID has been very frustrating for all of us. Okay, Glenda is asking about people quarantining after traveling. If they cannot separate from their family, does the whole household need to quarantine? So Glenda is asking a question about Governor Wolf's order last Thursday that um, said if you've traveled to one of, I think it's 15 states at this point, if you've traveled to one of those, um, say South Carolina, if you're coming back, uh, you need to quarantine for 14 days. Now, um, the order from Governor Wolf states that only those who have traveled have to quarantine. So Glenda, that's a really good question. And at this point, the governor's order states for those who have traveled, they need to quarantine. Um, but if, you know, if you're in a, um, you might want to check in with your employer if you're the a household, if you share a household with somebody who traveled to one of these states, um, you might want to check with, with your employer or um, uh, figure out what the best step, best step is forward. Um, and this is why this is so hard, right? Uh, we're in the green phase now, but there's more and more precautions being put on, which I think is, is, is a good thing in many ways. Um, I, what I'm hoping this means is we are in green phase and our businesses can be open, but we're adding on more broad precautions and orders are, are like globally around everything um, instead of where it, what kind of you know seemed to happen at the beginning where you you were deeming businesses essential non-essential um, right now to me it's better if we all are mandated to wear masks if we're mandated to quarantine um, then that's I think that that makes a lot of sense and we then hopefully can keep um, hopefully we can keep the, uh, the businesses and organizations open. So Judy's asking about nothing being recycled. Um, sorry, Judy, to clarify, the paper and cardboard is being recycled. That that has been being recycled this entire time. It's the co-mingles, it's that glass aluminum plastic that the recycling center stopped taking because of COVID. They informed us last month that instead of opening back up under yellow or green, which was what we were waiting for, 
they decided that they are, um, they have not reopened and now they're um, set up, they set a proposal to uh, charge, uh, charge uh, us and the, the other boroughs and townships and cities in the county, um, which has to date, we've not been charged for taking our recyclables and now they're wanting us to pay. So we are re again reviewing that, uh, but your, your paper and your cardboard um, has been being recycled and the, the co-mingle we've, we've been uh, upfront about that since day one, the co-mingles um, they stopped taking in March uh, because of the contamination risk um, for people, you know, putting their mouths to cans, bottles and plastic. Okay. So Judy's question, and, and as I said, we're reviewing options for that. It's, um, it makes me sick also, Judy. <laughs> um, I, and Bill and, and anybody who's on there, I, my mom's always on these Facebook uh, lives and she knows um, I've been recycling since I was 10 years old in 1990 when we got our first, um, our first uh, bucket. I, I still do now, but I mean, I was 10 years old. I was washing out the, the shampoo. And at that time you had to separate the ones, the twos, three, the four, the five, six, seven. Um, and I was always diligent about that. And um, it's, it's something that we've, we've got to, we've got to settle out and we've got, I think we even have a call tomorrow morning um, about that to figure out what the best way forward is for us. Okay. I don't see any other questions today. Um, really appreciate everybody logging on and being in this with us. We're trying, we're really trying to, to get back to you uh, as soon as we can from letters, calls, emails. Uh, we can't always respond the first in that first moment or that, or that first week. Um, you know, sometimes we'll get a letter I know we got a letter last, uh, last week and we, we are working on a response. Um, you know, we, we can't respond to everybody in the same day that, that you, um, that you get to us necessarily. So please be patient, uh, in a similar way that I, I want to manage expectation from the treasury department, treasury department here with the checks for the refuse. It's a very, very, very small team, like two people. <laughs> um, so it's very small, um, here at the mayor's office, you know, we basically have a couple, a couple people that are, that are answering those calls and emails. So, uh, I'm so grateful to those teams. I'm grateful to, uh, the team that is, uh, always working so hard to answer those phone calls, answer those emails. Um, Denise, Megan, um, you do an amazing job all of the time and I appreciate you. So, um, please, please know that we are going to get back to you. We haven't yet. And you, you sent us a message earlier this week or last week. We will get back to you. Um, we're trying. We're trying really, really hard. It's a big city, 77,000 people. We have a lot of ways to get in touch with us, which is by design. We want to, to be accessible and um, we will answer your questions and we do take every call and email seriously. Um, most of, you know, a lot of calls and emails about licensing inspections. Tom Oleski up there is doing a great job of trying to get to all those calls. And uh, we will, we really will um, get to everyone. So uh, thanks for your patience on that. And thanks not only, not only to Denise and Megan on my team, um, thanks to the treasury team, thanks to all of, all of our teams throughout the administration, uh, the police, the fire, the public works, our code enforcement. Um, everybody's working really hard and I, I really appreciate that. So with that, thank you guys. Have a great um, weekend and we'll see you here at noon next week.